Hey everyone, I wanted to do a session on karma and how doing behavior-driven development in Angular is actually really easy. Um, for those of you that watched my DevTO presentation or one of my previous workflow, um, I've mentioned karma, but I haven't actually shown how to use it. Well, that's what I want to do now and give an intro into how easy testing can be in Angular. Karma is written by the core Angular team. It's a really, really great test runner, and it provides all kinds of great functionality for automatic testing of your running of your unit tests as you as you code. So you're going to know when you break things. You're going to know um, right away that a particular refactoring has had interesting side effects, which is super useful and saves a lot of time in the long run. So Let's jump into it. Um, for those of you that are familiar with my DevTO presentation, I built a little attendance list application called AttendMe. Um, this is what the basic markup looked like. And I'm going to show how to do this, but from a behavior driven development standpoint. On the left hand side here, I've got my main markup. Um, this is exactly the same markup that I used in my original presentation. Uh, I've just moved it into the Yeoman generated templated um, system that I that I generated previously and things are a little bit different I have this main.html which is actually a view which is rendering all this out now as opposed to just having a single HTML page that everything lived within in my original presentation this breaks things up it makes things more modular there's a whole bunch of good reasons to do this one really nice thing about WebStorm in particular is that Karma Runner is built in right, right off the bat. Um, I've already set up uh, Karma Continuous Testing um, within it here, but let's have a look at how this is actually configured. All I really have to do to, if I have, don't have this defined, is hit this little Add New Configuration button, pick Karma, and then it picks up all the all of the default, and all I have to do is point it at a configuration file. So, and this is something that Yeoman generates off the bat. So I come in here, um, pick karma.conf, and uh, we're actually good to go at that point. I'm not going to actually um, add this one because I have one already. But in karma.conf, um, well, let's have a look at this very briefly. It has all of the configuration information for, um, for Karma. So it defines which files it's interested in that's gonna load into the test runner. Um, once we exclude, um, I have coverage reporting being generated as well. There are some preprocessors that uh, make for some more advanced uh, testing and uh, advanced features that I can cover later. The nice thing here is that I can, um, I can supply all these different browsers that I want to actually have my, my unit tests run in. And I can, can connect all of these guys and it will launch them automatically. Um, but I also really neat features that I can actually manually connect browsers to my Karma instance as well um, to have them test in. So this is great for testing on iPads, iPhones. Um, another thing is you can define is also proxies. So if you have a another like a, a web backend that you want to proxy into your application um, for some reason, you can set up a proxy within uh, Karma as well, which is really convenient. So um, let's get back into the actually writing tests. So I've got this basic HTML. There's no real Angular being um, used here. And that I wanted to start from exactly the same base that I had before with my other application. But we're going to do it in a test-driven way. So on the right-hand side here, I have my tests. And Yeoman, by default, puts these under test, uh, spec, uh, then controllers because I'm going to be testing controller and then the name of the controller uh, test right here. So this is what corresponds to this file and then up here in app uh, scripts controllers main I have this code which provides all of the functionality for the main controller. Um, this is where a large amount of the testing testable code that I'm going to be writing is going to go into. So. Uh, in behavior-driven development, let's start by, you know, we start with a describe. Um, this is using the Jasmine um, test library. It provides mocks, it provides spies, all the great good stuff that you would need to test a large-scale application. So let's start 
in a test driven way, we're going to start defining um, some behavior. So one of the things is we have this add button here. You know, it doesn't do a whole lot. We click add, nothing happens. But um, we're going to need to let's let's define some behavior for that. So um, we want to say it uh, should add a new person to the attendee list when add button is clicked. So here we are. Now you notice that I'm typing a lot, right? Um, and the really nice feature of a WebStorm is that uh, I can create live templates. I've actually do have a live template that allows me to create these it blocks with a few keystrokes. Because we're testing a controller, we need to get a reference to, the, to a controller. Because Angular is very heavily based around dependency injection, we can just inject that controller into our test. Also, because controllers have a requirement that a root scope be defined for it, that, it, that it, a scope exists for it, um, we can also inject root scope into each one of our tests. Um, and this will, will set up that particular controller. What this means is that the code here, right here, that implements, that creates, that, that is part of that controller, um, is now available and um, active in each one of our tests. Uh, we can inject more things. So say we need uh, reference to a service um, or some other piece of logic that we have defined. We can also inject them in that before each block as well. Um, so getting back into writing our tests. On a controller in Angular, um, all of our functions and variables get attached to the scope. It's the place that glues everything together. So um, we're going to need a, a function that adds a person that gets called when this add button is clicked, and it's going to be on the scope. So um, we're going to expect that scope dot add person exists. Like it, it, it makes sure that it is defined. Um, and what we're going to do is actually start our test runner. Um, I'm going to pick it here, continuous to karma continuous. And let's start this guy up, see what happens. Okay, so as you noticed, um, on the right-hand side here, we've had all of our tests that have run. Um, I'm getting some, this is just some nice error messages telling me that, you know, you know what, my test has failed. And here's a particular line that it failed on. So this expect is failing because it's expecting something to be defined, and it's not. Um, but also, because of the nice tight integration with WebStorm on the left-hand side, I can see that Chrome, the version of Chrome, had a failure in a test. And this controller, main controller test, and here's the actual test that failed. So I can click on that, and you'll notice that my cursor jumped to the particular test that actually failed. So it gives me a really easy way of jumping around my source code. I can also go to the particular line that um, in the in my JavaScript that might have failed by clicking on it here. Really excellent integration. Now, you notice how I have Chrome defined, but let's say I want to test on an iPad. Well, what am I going to do? Well, if we uh, pull up the URL of our Karma Runner, this is where all of our tests are being executed at localhost 9876. If I copy this and I actually have a an iPad simulator running, um, I'm just going to paste this guy in here, load this up, and then all of a sudden, you'll notice that Mobile Safari 7 for iOS 7 and Chrome are now connected. Now all of my tests are actually going to be run on both of those devices. And if there's a difference between how they handle JavaScript and I am having a bug in one place, not the other, I'm going to know about it. This is really super, super important for um, catching bugs before they get out in the wild. I could connect n number of devices to this system. OK, so we've got this failing test. Um, and now we've got it running in two different browsers. We should expect a new person to, to, a new person to the attendee list when the Add button is clicked. Well, we're getting this error that uh, object object has no method is uh, all right. You know what? It's not is defined. It's to be defined. So right there, we're saving. Now you notice my tests aren't running. Um, I can run them manually, or I can enable auto test, which I'm actually going to do. I'm going to click this auto test, and I'm just going to let it run through and, and run my tests on a on a regular basis. 
So let's start this guy up. Um, expected undefined to be defined. Well, that means that scope dot add person right here is undefined. And as we would expect, we go over to my controller, we're going to see that scope dot awesome things is what exists there. And there is no add person function. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm just going to clear this out because this is not useful to us at all. And we're going to say add person equals function. And then save this. And you'll notice on the right hand side, this refreshed. Um, and now my tests will um, kick off in a second here. Nice thing about this is that if I make some errant changes, you know, I hit oh, I, I hit save and then I realize that I made a typo or something, my tests don't run right away, um, which is which is nice, um, so that I don't end up running like you know all my tests needlessly when I make one letter typo. Um, so you notice that these tests are now passing because I have this one expectation, uh, expect scope that add person to be defined. Um, but this test doesn't actually test what, everything that we want it to. So um, we also need to test that the attendee list should exist. So I want to say it should. And actually, here's a really good opportunity to use my, my um, live templates. So I can say JIT, which is something that I've set up expand it should have a list of attendees great so um, we want to expect uh, that scope dot attendee list to be defined great so we have a, we can actually remove this assertion here because we have a test that covers it already um, and now we have noticed that we have these couple of failing, or we have my test just rerun, and we have one passing and one failing. So what we want to do here now is when we're adding a new person, um, we want to have it pushed onto that attendee list. And uh, we're going to be reading that from a variable that's defined in the actual HTML. Um, so we're going to need a variable for that. And that is going to be called, let's call that new person. So um, scope dot new person equals, it's an empty string for now. There's, there's no one there by default. Um, we need to update this test to actually say, um, should add a new person uh, from the new pers person variable. when the add button is clicked. So we want to expect that scope that add person to be defined. We want to expect that scope dot new person to be to be defined. We're going to expect that Attendee list at length to be one because we're adding something to the list. Um, that's a good place to start. So when we save these guys, the tests will probably be run and they should all pass because we have those available. Now we also want to check that um, expect scope dot. ND list or, uh, zero to be new person A. And before we run all of these, we actually need to call that function. So we're going to say scope dot add person. And we're going to say new person name. And you see that person gets added to the list, which is great. So now we're going to save that, see what happens. We're running, we've got some failures. Um, what's happening? Expected zero to be one, undefined to be a new person name. So there we are. 